I feel like I have made so many videos on my channel about how to finish 3D prints that it has almost become like a genre of video tutorial that I I guess I'm going to make every year. And it really just goes to show how a lot of 3D printing and a lot of cosplay in general is really down to trial and error because I've used a lot of materials to get my 3D print smooth, including Bondo, Rust-Oleum filler primer. I've even used nothing at all in the very beginning. That is true. There are some of my props that just have layer lines on them and I don't really care. And then finally in 2021, I largely was using UV resin in order to sand my 3D prints. And that last method has really been a big sticking point and a reason that I've kind of stalled out on making a lot of my polka tan tutorials because I don't really recommend using that anymore. It feels like because I use that on that costume that I somehow can't share these tutorials, which again, this is me and my limiting beliefs here. I'm just kind of talking through my process. I've been doing this new way of smoothing my 3D prints for about maybe three or four months and I've really been enjoying it. So I thought I would share that with you guys today. First off, let me share all the tools that I use. And first I use this Dupacolor primer. It is important to make sure that you get the type that says it is for the deep scratches. It comes in a red oxide version as well as a gray primer, but I prefer the red. I don't know, I just feel like it works a little bit better. I've got a mouse sander as well as sandpaper pads ranging from 80 grit to 320 grit, a respirator and refills that are rated for working with fumes because especially if you're using the red oxide version, you are definitely going to want to have a respirator on whenever you're working with it. And then last, if I end up needing it for a specific project, I will use this 3M spot fill. Now, the first thing that I do is I take my 3D print and I take some 80 to 120 grit sandpaper and and just start sanding down those layer lines. So usually whenever I'm printing things, I'm typically printing in 0.28 millimeter layer height. I just find that that works for what I do because I do a lot of larger things and I don't need really fine details on a lot of stuff, I will typically be using 80 grit sandpaper to get those layer lines down. In the past couple of months, I've been printing some things at point one two millimeter layer height and I've found that with those specific prints I have been able to get away with doing 100 to 120 grit on my first pass to get those layer lines down. Again with a lot of things it's down to trial and error. If you're you know sanding your layer lines down and you're seeing that they're not really going anywhere then go with a lower grit of sandpaper. You could even go down to 60 and 40 grit sandpaper if you really feel it needs it. Just make sure to let your you know, mouse sander do the work for you. Don't be pushing into it too much. You might cause your filament to kind of, you know, melt a little bit because this is plastic. And I should have mentioned that at the beginning, I print everything with PLA. Different filaments are going to react differently to this method as well, but I largely print in PLA. Actually, I don't know why I say largely print. I have only ever printed in PLA because I'm lazy and I don't feel like figuring out the other ones. Once I'm done with that first sanding pass, I then wipe down my print and I dust all of like the fuzzies off, especially if you're using a lower grit like 40 to 80, you might find some little fuzz balls popping up. Sometimes I will even go over the print a little bit more with some 120 grit sandpaper to kind of just smooth that over a little bit. And then once that is all dry, I then take my Dupacolor primer and I apply a very thick wet coat of that primer all over my print. This primer is really kind of the secret of this new method because since it is an automotive build formula, it really does get into those small micro scratches and dents and things that, you know, just kind of pop up in our 3D prints and really covers those over like very smoothly. I know that you can also use this formula in an HPL V-Gun. However, I know myself, I'm not going to clean out an HPL V-Gun every single time. So these rattle cans work perfectly fine for me. Once that layer is dry, again, I usually let my layers dry about an hour or so. I then go in with some 240 to 320 grit on my mouse sander. And I like to concentrate on sanding all of the high spots down to the low. Again, this is something you kind of just get a feel for after you've been sanding 3D prints for a very long time. This is also around the time that if I'm seeing some really big holes or dents or I'm seeing a lot of just layer lines on my piece still, I will then go in with that 3M spot putty. You can also use Bondo. However, I found that this 3M like tends to kick up a little bit less dust and it's a lot easier to sand. Also, it's green. So hello green, I'm going to want to use something that's green. And then once I'm all done sanding that and the spot putty has dried, I usually give it about like a half hour to an hour to dry. I then will go in and spray on another layer of the Dupacolor primer. Usually two layers of this primer is more than enough to cover up all of the layer lines that I've got going on. But obviously every 3D print is different and there may be some times where you feel just one more layer of it will kind of get you home free or there may even be times where just one layer of it 
it will be totally fine. Once that final layer of filler primer is dry, I then go in and do some wet sanding. And I was one of those people who really didn't wet sand a lot of my prints for the longest time. I think the reason I started wet sanding was mostly because I was tired of getting Bondo dust all on our cars in the garage. And so wet sanding obviously alleviated all of that dust clouds and stuff like that. But what I typically do is I will take my 3D print and then I will take some 320 grit sandpaper, make sure that it is the type that you actually can get wet and wet sand with. And then I will just go in small circles all along the print. I make sure to clean out that piece of sandpaper every couple of passes because it does get clogged up with all of the primer and stuff that you've got on it. And it's kind of hard to see the progress that you're making with wet sanding, but once you have been doing it for a little bit, you'll eventually start to see a sheen. And this really comes across whenever you dry your piece off. That will tell you that you're starting to get a much smoother finish on your print. Once I'm finished with that wet sanding step, I'm usually just going right in with some paint on top of that. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters, and if you would like to join them, you can head over to patreon.com slash vaultbox. If you have any other questions, as always, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And as always, I will catch you guys next time. Bye!